Finally, my first day at school has come. Yay! This special occasion called for my favorite hoodie. Super cool, right? <laughs> but then, out of nowhere, I was blocked by a group of boys and their cheesy pickup lines. No time for monkey mm -hmm. business, but they wouldn't let me go. Hey, do you know who I am? I'm... Everything suddenly went blurry. Oh no, my glasses! I stumbled around trying to grab them back, but got shoved to the floor. Everyone scram, give me that. I looked up and vaguely saw my hero offering me a hand. He gave me my glasses and I profusely thanked him, but he just gave me a cold look and walked off without saying a word. Strange. Oh, by the way, I'm Hazel Palmer, 17 years old, but I'm not here as a student, but a teacher. Yes, you heard it right. Not to brag, but I'm kind of a genius. <laughs> I even got offered a position in my college's research project, which I have rejected to pursue my dream of becoming a high school teacher. So here I am on my very first day of fulfilling it. First, I was introduced to the other teachers, but unlike what I had in mind, they just threw me judgy looks. Luckily, after the meeting, a young teacher named Rebecca kindly welcomed me and even tipped me off about some of the rebels at school. Now time to meet my students. As soon as I finished my introduction, the whole class immediately turned into a beehive. Miss, how about we continue this lesson at the movies tonight? Mullet, Paris nose. This guy must be the notorious Lucas that Rebecca warned me about. Please, as if you'd date someone who would wear such a goofy hoodie. Yeah, who let a weeaboo teach here? Jeez, I didn't expect this reaction. I tried to restore the silence, but to no avail. Ugh, I'm out of patience. Quiet, or else you'll all get F's. Thank God it worked. Whew, that'll show them who's in charge. But here comes another problem. No way! There's gotta be someone who's really here to study, right? Okay, who is our class's top student? Ethan! Ah, didn't he help me in the hallway? But it looked like he didn't recognize me. Okay, let's see. Ethan, right? Could you solve this equation? A equation? N no, equation. I suppose spelling is a bit hard for a numbers person like you. And the whole class burst into laughter. Jeez, this guy was unbelievable. Hmm, how about the second best student? Cassie Santago? That name sounded just like my old classmates. I turned to the corner where an arm reluctantly raised. Oh my, it's her! So good to see a familiar face here. But why is she avoiding me? That afternoon, while walking to my car, I saw Cassie and her friends picking on a girl. Upon seeing me, they immediately ran away, but I managed to catch Cassie. Cassie, since when did you become a mean girl? None of your business. Report me to the principal if you like. Then she strutted away, leaving me standing there confused. Since when had the sweet Cassie ended up on the dark side? Turned out, not long ago, Cassie's father passed away in an accident, leaving her to live with her stepmother. This must left her in so much grief that she put up this cold, reckless facade as a defense mechanism. That's so sad. So, to make Cassie feel included, and also to improve this whole class's performance, I came up with a master plan. More homework, not finished, minus points, and every lesson will come with a gift, a test during recess, and I asked Cassie and Ethan to help the other students. But when I called Cassie to the board, strangely, she couldn't do a simple equation. At first, I thought that it was just her being rebellious, but during the test that day, I noticed her copying Ethan's answers. Does that mean all her A's were from cheating? Not only that, the even shocker thing I found out was that Ethan was her stepbrother. After class, I came to talk to her, but she didn't pay me any attention. Cassie, I know the secret behind your A's. High scores mean nothing when they're not from your own hard work. But out of my business. <laughs> You're as much my friend as you are a proper teacher. I'd be pleased to tutor you. How about today? See you in the library after school. As if I care. Her words did hurt, but I guess she was just trying to keep her cold image. So I still waited for her, but she never showed up. No matter how much I tried, Cassie ignored me and kept cheating. During the midterm test, she even blatantly snatched Ethan's paper. It's true she's my friend, but I couldn't let it slide any longer, so I dismissed her test. That had to be done. <sighs> On the same day, while I was in the library searching for materials, I heard familiar voices talking. Ms. Palmer is way too much. She even dismissed Cassie's test today. Can you believe this? Why can't she be understanding like you? Cut her some slack, Sadie. She's just doing what she thinks is best. So that's what my students really thought of me? After everything I did to try and help them, 
Yet all I got back was bad-mouthing? And Rebecca was so nice to defend me like that. No wonder they liked her. <sighs> a few days later, the unexpected happened. Cassie, Lucas, and a few others came and asked for extra lessons. Finally, they started to have another eye on studying. But little did I know that it's just a ruse for my dear students to turn the following days into a nightmare. And the instigator was Lucas, I supposed. One day, I almost fainted upon finding a huge ant nest inside my bag. The other day, my pants were stuck to the chair with some gum. <sighs> Fortunately, Ethan always showed up in time to help me. He's such a riddle. Unlike before, not only did he try to defend me in class, but he also helped me carry my textbooks. But I didn't expect him to care that much. One time, I saw him at the car wash where I worked part time. I quickly hid behind a car, but Ethan just kept walking towards my wash box. I'm here to see you, so no need to hide. Let me give you a hand. After my shift, Ethan took me home. We talked a lot, and I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my mom's health condition and how I took this part-time job to cover her hospital fee. This side of him was far different from the normal, and it was heartwarming. Suddenly, we noticed an elderly lady who seemed lost, so we offered to take her home. And guess what? She's the grandma of the notorious Lucas. I was truly surprised by how much of a rebel like Lucas cared for his Nana. I could tell he really loved her a lot. Poor boy. She's the only family he got now. Lucas, I know studying is not your thing, but have you thought about how happy your grandma would be if you at least tried? Since then, Lucas stopped causing me any mischief, and so did the other students. Now they could even do simple math themselves. Baby steps. <laughs> Seeing my effort finally bore fruit, I set up a parent meeting to report students' progress. Halfway through my presentation, a photo of me cosplaying as Sailor Moon popped up on the screen. Oh my god, why is it here? How dare you let this childish thing teach my kids? Then she stormed off, followed by everyone else. I thought I finally had my students on my side. Turns out I never did. Then came the last straw, my mom's medical test results. I couldn't help but cry, letting all my bottled up emotions out. Then, suddenly, a hand laid on my shoulder. What's wrong? My mom's health turned worse, and she needs an urgent operation. I'm sorry to hear that. It's all gonna be okay. Be strong, Miss Palmer. I appreciated him comforting me, and when I felt a bit better, we decided to leave. But the door was locked from the outside. It must have been a prank from my students, again. We tried banging the door and screaming for help, but eventually gave up and waited for someone to come. This quiet atmosphere sure does have a way of making people open up, and I got to know about Ethan. Seemed like both of us have problems with our beloved family. What's yours? I... I have a sister. You know who. That I really adore. But no matter how hard I try, she always builds a wall between us. Oh, wasn't this the first time Ethan talked about his personal life? He always put on a cold and distant mask. But I knew deep down he had his struggles too. I was so absorbed in his story that I forgot about being locked up and gradually fell asleep until a buzzing sound startled me and countless phone cameras were pointing at us. Guys, check your phones. Look what Miss Palmer and Ethan have been doing this whole time. Oh my, a bunch of photos of me and Ethan have been uploaded on the school website. And from some angles, it looked like we were kissing. <gasps> oh no. I tried to explain, but they just threw me a disgusted look. And why was Ethan just standing here saying nothing? This soon reached the principal. He told me there would be a case hearing for inappropriate relationship with a student. How was this even possible? As I dragged my feet to the principal's office, suddenly I heard familiar voices shouting. Why did you do that? I told you to find her weakness and look what you got. Nothing. I've done everything I could. What else do you want? Everything? Then why is she still here? As long as she's around, she messes up our cheating stuff. And mom will get my head shoot off for being useless at school. Or is that what you want, brother? What? <gasps> so Cassie had been pulling the strings this entire time? And Ethan was her puppet, befriending me just to please his sister. I knew she hated me, but did Ethan have to be so heartless too? Cassie then caught my eye, so I ran away. I was still trying to process this when I walked in to see the school council glaring at me. You're an insult to the teaching profession which leaves us no choice. I was ready for the worst when Ethan rushed in. Stop, it was me who deliberately jammed the classroom's lock to get back at her for being too strict, but I accidentally got stuck too. There's nothing going on between us. And so I was cleared of all charges and Ethan ended up in a week long suspension. 
Why did he do that after all? After such a long trial, I drove around town to blow off some steam, then saw Cassie fighting with a security guard. I found out that Cassie stole a bracelet and was refusing to call her parents. The guard said he'd have to call the cops, so I came forward as her teacher to bail her out. Cassie asked me why I helped her, but I didn't bother explaining myself and just left. Since that day, Cassie didn't attend the extra classes. After his suspension, Ethan returned with his offhand attitude. <sighs> no time to worry about those two. My mission now was to prepare my students for the upcoming finals and regain my prestige. Luckily, they started to take studying seriously and invested a lot in these tests. One day, when I walked into class, some students even asked me to help solve advanced exercises. Two weeks later, when the results came, my excited students all rushed over to me. Miss Palmer, thanks to you, the questions were the same as the ones you showed us the other day, so it only took us a blink to finish. What are they talking about? Before I could understand, the principal summoned me to his office. As I entered, he angrily showed me the math sheet that I was allegedly teaching in the extra class. What kind of work ethic allows leaking exam questions, Miss Palmer? Leak the test? <gasps> me? No! Please! No more excuses. You're fired. No, no! They can't punish me for something I didn't do. Someone must have framed me. I asked my students where they got that piece of paper and they said it was already on the table when they came to class. So Cassie and Ethan must have been behind this. Good job, Ethan, for putting up their remorse act just to set up a bigger plan to humiliate me. Okay then, they won. Unemployed and desperate, with hospital bills to cover, I had to work full time at the car wash, as well as taking night shifts at 7-Eleven. But besides the measly wages was a bonus of rotten eggs and tomatoes, scornful looks and snarky comments saying I didn't deserve the teacher title. <sighs> the scandal truly turned my life upside down. Then, when I was at the hospital with my mom, suddenly Ethan rushed in and said he would clear my name. Clear my name? Wasn't he the one who put dirt on me? What was he playing this time? With nothing to lose, I reluctantly went with him. He led me to the school's control room. The principal was also there. Then I saw Sadie standing on stage. Ethan said it was her who discreetly put the math sheet on the table. What? But Rebecca? I distributed the test like you said, but I'm scared. What if someone finds out? Don't worry, now that Miss Palmer's fired, who else can dig this up? I'm only taking back my position as the beloved teacher who can take cover for y'all. No, I have to tell the principal everything. Who would believe you? I would. Furious, I rushed over to the stage and confronted her. Rebecca, I thought you were my friend. How could you? Don't ask me, ask your phony self. Weren't you just trying to get the students to like you? What nonsense was she saying? I'm just doing my part of being a good teacher. How could she be so selfish and cruel? Out of jealousy? Miss Palmer earned her students' respect with her pure heart. Look at you. The so-called love you have comes from buttering them up with all your lies. That's why they turn stubborn and make light of studying. I never knew you were that kind of person. How could you call yourself a teacher? The principal couldn't hide his rage, fired Rebecca, then apologized to me and offered me my job back. But after all these troubles, this school had completely drained me. I couldn't take it anymore, so I refused. As I was wiping away my tears, Ethan came to my side. Miss Palmer, I'm sorry for everything I did. I just tried to please Cassie, but now I know I was only hurting you. I've already known about that. I was about to leave when a group of students led by Cassie approached us. Then Ethan told me it was Cassie who helped him with the plan to bait Rebecca into admitting her actions. Sorry for all the horrible things I did to you. Please stay. We've learned a lot since you moved here. Please don't leave us. Such a crazy term. I ended up staying. I mean, this is my dream job after all, and I'm not one to give up that easily. I also talked to Cassie's stepmom about her studying. Turns out she didn't realize her strict approach was causing a rift between them all. Cassie, Ethan, and their mom had a talk, and now they seem to understand each other better. I was so happy for them, and we became friends after that. Time flies, and now my students or my friends to be correct graduated and would soon fly off to pursue their own dreams. Suddenly, Ethan dragged me to a corner. So from now on, we're no longer teacher and student, right? I guess, but so... But could you still teach me? Teach me how to love you.
You see that sad girl sitting there in a flood of tears? Yeah, I know, she's pretty hard to miss. Well, that was me a few months ago. My boyfriend had literally just broken up with me, and I had to pack my stuff out of his place ASAP with a resentful heart. But thinking back, if he hadn't broken my heart, I wouldn't have fallen into this super awkward and ridiculous situation. Oh, I forgot. I'm Ava. I'm 22, and I suck at love. So anyway, after crying like a newborn, I realized I needed a trip away to free my mind, just like Julia Roberts' character did in the movie Eat, Pray, Love. But I could only afford to do the low-budget version. So I went on Airbnb and found a reasonably priced room to rent in this idyllic beach house. And it gets even better. The owner, Hazel, is out most of the time, so it would be like renting the whole house with the price of one room. Awesome! Reserved! I needed to get out of this emotional hellhole ASAP. As expected, Hazel wasn't home when I arrived, and I had to find the hidden key under a plant pot by the door and let myself in. And oh my, it was like stepping into a life-size retro dollhouse. From the chic furniture to the funky wallpaper, I loved it here. This Hazel girl has got some taste. Ooh, there was even a record player. If I'd have known, I would have brought my vinyls with me. But hey, her collection wasn't too shabby. I have to admit that the idea of having a cool friend like this Hazel girl sounded pretty awesome. I was determined to actually meet her. Because, yeah, it's been five wonderful days staying here, and I still haven't run into her. So, one night, I settled down in the living room and watched a movie while waiting for her to come home. She eventually showed up at 2 a.m. Ugh, this girl wasn't kidding about coming home late. I greeted her and said, Hey, I saw you have an exacta 35mm film camera. That's so cool. Also, um, would you mind if I take a look at your vinyls? She looked a bit confused and replied, I have a what? Oh, you mean those rusty old things? They're my brothers. I doubt he'd mind. He always talks to me nonstop about them. So I think he'd be happy there's someone in this house who speaks the same language as him. Ha! <laughs> oh, they're her brothers? How very interesting. This got me thinking. Is he handsome? And what about his personality? Is he an arty type with a kind soul? Daydreaming about this mystery guy became a regular occurrence for me. Oh gosh. Was I crushing on a guy I'd never even met? How desperate was I? One day, I came home from grocery shopping. I was totally exhausted. So I threw the groceries in the kitchen and jumped straight onto the pile of blankets on my bed. Only, it wasn't just the simple blankets. What? Someone was under them. We banged heads. Ouch. I removed the blankets to catch this pervert out. Huh? I know this guy. It was my ex. What in God's name was he doing here? Oh, for the record, this wasn't my current ex. This was Nolan. We used to date back in high school, but I'd not spoken to him in a long time. So it turns out he's Hazel's mystery brother. Ew. This whole time I'd been accidentally crushing on my jerky ex-boyfriend. This made sense now, as we always did have lots in common, but ugh. Thank you, universe, for ruining my vacation. With a dagger stare, I asked him why he had the audacity to be napping in my bed. He snorted, then said, Your bed? This is my house, in my room. The question is, what are you doing here? Reluctantly, I explained everything to him, and it turns out he was meant to be away on a two-month business trip, so Hazel put his room on Airbnb without asking him. The problem being, he came back early. He just shrugged and said, But I'm home now, so can you please take your stuff and get out of here? I'll get Hazel to refund you or whatever. This made me mad. I'd paid for the room. I had rights, so I was staying put. So I told him, I'm not going anywhere. You'll just have to sleep on the couch. He didn't seem happy about it. In fact, he grumbled to himself as he left the room. But at least he left. I thought this would be it. But oh, how wrong I was. And that's when the war for the bedroom began. The next morning, I awoke to hear these weird squawking noises. Then I felt something flap in my face. Sleepily, I tried to whack it away and opened my eyes. 
staring back at me was this massive gull. Ugh! Nolan! There were about a dozen of them hanging out in my room, all pecking and flapping around my stuff. It took me over an hour to shoo them out of the window. Afterward, I was so mad that I locked myself in the bathroom. After 30 minutes, Nolan thudded on the door. He urgently needed to use it. I opened the door with a smirk on my face and brushed past him. I soon heard his disgruntled shouts. Yep, I'd wrapped the toilet paper with duct tape. Ha! I wasn't done with him yet, so that evening I hid some cookie crumbs on the couch, and he woke up the next day covered in ant bites. He was like a real-life dot-to-dot. <laughs> yes, it's 2-1, loser. This went on for a couple of days. Nolan switched the toaster settings so my breakfast was ruined. Yuck. So I sneakily downloaded a fake cracked screen app on his phone and placed it on the floor. When he picked up his phone, he totally freaked out and started blaming his dog. It was so funny. All this pranking was exhausting, so I was kind of relieved when Nolan went out one night and I could just chill on the couch and watch a movie. Suddenly, the power went out. Great. The switch must have tripped or something. I put on the torch on my phone and was about to go and check it out when my phone rang. All I could hear was someone deep breathing into it. What the hell? I hung up and my body started to shake. All of a sudden, the door burst open and Ghostface was standing there. Terrified, I held my head and screamed like a banshee. But then I heard somebody call my name. Ava, Ava! It's me, Nolan. It's okay. I was so relieved to see him that I jumped into his arms and cried into his sweater. Please don't cry. I've got you, he said in a soft voice while he held me. I felt so secure and safe. Um, what was that he was holding in his hand? It was a ghost face mask. It was him. He knew I hated horror movies. What a jerk. I pushed him away and shouted, What the hell? Are you crazy? He just smiled and replied, It was worth it, because the hug was so sweet. Man, I hate this jerk. After that, I avoided him. So, okay, I did catch myself looking over at him and getting this weird, warm feeling. One time, he was playing with his dog on the beach, and I watched on from the porch. Did I have a crush on my ex? My god, I hope not, because that would be pathetic. But I had to admit that, although his pranks were really annoying, they'd also been kind of fun. It made me reminisce on the old days when we were together, and we were so happy back then. But nothing lasts forever. (sighs) Hazel appeared with two cups of coffee, and we started chatting. I told her how annoying her brother was. She laughed, then replied, I know, sorry. I didn't know you guys used to date. I wouldn't have rented the room to you if I had. I get that it must be awkward for you, especially as you were the one who broke up with him, right? I did what? He was the one who broke up with me because he was moving away at the time and couldn't handle the long-distance relationship. And worse, he did it over a freaking letter. She looked at me confused then said, Oh, that's peculiar as he told me he wrote you a letter telling you about his feelings. Then you shouted at him that it was over. I replied, part of his letter said, I love you and all, but this long distance stuff is like madly scary. So it kind of seemed obvious to me that he wanted to end things. She shook her head. No, I swear he just wanted to tell you how much he loved you. But obviously, my dearest brother totally sucks at writing. What an idiot. I told him he should have let me proofread his dumb love letter. So, it turns out, our breakup had all been a misunderstanding. I mean, come on, who writes love letters anymore? Anyway, the past was the past, so I decided it was best to leave it there. Besides, I only had a few days left here. On my last day, I packed my things and said goodbye to Hazel. I had to admit that I was really gonna miss it here. Nolan was nowhere to be found. He must be celebrating because he finally had his room back. Whatever. It's not like I needed to say goodbye to him. I took a cab to the train station. On the way, I couldn't shake Nolan out of my head. He needed to know the truth about the breakup. 
I couldn't let him think that I was a cruel person back then. Stop! Turn around! I shouted out to the cab driver. I ran back into the house. Hazel stared at me in shock. Er, why aren't you at the train station? Oh, wow. I couldn't believe they wanted to get rid of me so fast. I was about to leave when Hazel continued. Nolan just took a cab there to talk to you. Let me call him. Nolan answered the phone and asked me to meet him at a lighthouse nearby. Oh gosh, I was so nervous. What did he want to tell me? Maybe Hazel had told him about our convo the other morning. I spotted him. He was holding something. Gee, I hoped it wasn't another letter. He blushed while looking at me. Then he said in a shy voice, I, um, you forgot something in my room. Then he handed me a bag. I opened it, and there was my lingerie. Oh, great. How could I forget them? So he wasn't going to tell me anything. But wait a minute. These weren't mine, and they still had the tags on. He giggled and said, Sorry, I swear that was the last prank. I just needed a reason to see you. Hazel told me everything. I don't blame you for our breakup. I blame my poor writing skills. The point is, I love you. I just love you. You're the only girl I've ever loved. Still to this day, I've never loved anyone else. Oh, gosh. I couldn't believe it. Although, I was pretty sure he'd just quoted that from a movie or series or something. As we all know, he sucks with words, and it sounded familiar. Anyway, I threw the bag of lingerie in his face and then wrapped my arms around him. So, from then on, the room war stopped. Not because I was leaving, but because we became roommates. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Actually, there's not much to tell. Only, when your boyfriend writes you a letter, please make sure you read it very carefully. Actually, scrap that. Just tell him to get with the times and to text you. Hi, I'm Belle. I'm 18, and today is my first day at Boston College. Isn't that cool? Oh, wait. I think I hear someone crying. Why don't we go shopping? It'll make you feel better. No, I don't want anything. Just leave me alone. Wait, that sobbing girl? She looked so familiar to me. Is that her? What are you looking at? The other girl snapped at me. Jeez, why so serious? The next day I decided to do the neighborly thing, so I brought an apple pie over to her. The door opened and, whoa, she looked like she'd tackled a tornado. Her hair and clothes were messy and her eyes were swollen. Oh, um, hi, I'm Belle. I just moved here. Nice to meet you. Oh, hi, I'm Laura. Yes, Laura, Laura from elementary school. How could she not know it was me? Then my childhood memories started flushing back to me. Back then I was super shy because my family had financial problems. I was always in worn clothes. I guess this made me an easy target for some mean kids. Then one day when I was walking home from school, those kids followed me, pushed me over, and started laughing as they searched through my backpack. But then a luxurious car pulled up alongside us, and Laura peered through the window and said to them, Leave her alone, else I'll revoke your invites to my party. After that, Laura left before I could even thank her, and the mean kids hurried off. Through my young eyes, I saw her as an angel. She was pretty and popular, but she'd still stopped to help me. Unfortunately, right after that incident, my parents thought it was best to transfer me to another school, and I never saw Laura again. Well, until now. Thanks for the apple pie. Come in if you want. Oh, yes, if you don't mind. I walked inside and, oh my, her room was a mess. There were clothes everywhere, trash on the floor, and dirty dishes overflowing in the basin. Something bad must have happened to her to get her this down in the dumps. So I asked her what was up, and she told me her boyfriend had just broken up with her. The worst part was she left her family and friends behind to move here for him. But then he ended things without even giving her an explanation. Poor Laura. 
The breakup was over two months ago, but it still seemed to be fresh in her mind. I tried comforting her, but the more I did, the more she cried. Ah. <sighs> The next day, I decided to swing by and check if she was okay. The door was ajar, so I peered inside and saw a glum-looking Lara sitting on the floor, hugging and sniffing something. Lara? What are you doing? <laughs> I found this, and I just miss him so much. Oh. Turns out she was looking through her closet for her sweater, and ended up finding her ex's hoodie. That's it. Enough was enough. It was time I finally returned the favor and saved Laura just like she'd saved me back in fifth grade. You'll never move on if his things are staring you in the face. I told her it was time to get her ex's belongings. And you know what? She had a whole big box of his stuff. I took a look, and that's when I saw a photo of them. This is... him? I couldn't hide my surprise. Yeah, that's Cameron, my boyfriend, or... Did I say my ex... Why do you ask? Oh, um, nothing. Just thank God you're not together anymore. The word jerk is written all over his face. Then we threw the whole box in the dorm's dumpster downstairs. The poor girl looked like she wanted to jump right in there to retrieve it. I'm going to help you get over this guy. I promise. You're about to discover just how fun being single can be. Oh, you're single too? Um, yeah, of course. Now that her ex's stuff was in the trash where it belonged, it was time to live our best happy single lives. Each morning, I dragged Laura jogging around the park with me and showed her how to prepare delicious, healthy meals. Can you believe that she didn't even know how to boil an egg without burning the pot? Yep, I know. It's shocking. Then one time, her basin blocked up and she was totally freaking out. I came to the rescue with my trusted plunger and showed her how to fix it. Easy peasy. And best of all, no man was needed to save these damsels. <laughs> Next, I needed to show Laura how to enjoy life because all she seemed to do was slump around her room. So, on Saturday night, I dragged her and Kayla to this really cool bar. Man, I'm thirsty. My teenies? My treat. Hold up, Laura. Do you want to know how to get free drinks? And then I told her to walk past some guys, flip her hair, and wink at them with the cutest smile on her face and... Bam. Just like that, we had drinks bought for us. Laura seemed very happy with what she just accomplished, and that made me happy too. Only Kayla didn't look so thrilled about it. Maybe her martini tasted too bitter. <laughs> While we were having fun, my phone suddenly rang. Oh my god. I've been longing for that call. But why now? I put it on silent and continued chatting. Why aren't you answering? Oh, it's nothing. Are you sure? Seems important. Yeah, no worries. Before I could finish my sentence, I suddenly heard someone calling Laura. Laura? Oh, Jack! Hi, it's been so long. I'm surprised to see you here. Are you alone or with friends? And before Laura could introduce us, the guy stared at me. Hmm, hey, I think I know you. Nah, I don't think we've ever met. I immediately denied it. But this guy was so insistent... He kind of made me uncomfortable that I accidentally knocked over my glass. Then I had to make a mad dash to the bathroom to clean myself up. Anyway, that night was great. I was kind of proud of myself for proving to Laura that being single wasn't so bad after all. But then the very next morning, disaster struck. Kayla ordered me into Laura's room, where she was curled up on her bed, holding a photo of her and Cameron. Ugh, so much for getting rid of all reminders of him. Laura sobbed out that Jack told her that Cameron was seeing someone else, and now Kayla had come up with an idea to get revenge on him. I know this hurts, but please, just ignore him and move on with your life. Pfft, what do you know? Are you on Laura's side or her jerky exes? I just ignored Kayla and tried to talk to some sense into Laura. Thank God she seemed to listen to me and cancel the revenge plan. Oh boy, Kayla looked furious. I went back to my dorm and let out a relieved sigh. Then suddenly my phone got an incoming message. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Okay, the truth is, I'm seeing this guy who I like loads, but I didn't want to rub Laura's face in it, so I haven't mentioned it to her. The next morning, I put on a cute dress, did my makeup, styled my hair, and excitingly stepped out of my dorm room to find stacks of trash bags in front of my door. Who on earth did this? 
I dragged them downstairs to put them in the dumpster. When I found all my mail in there covered in trash juice. Ew. Was this a prank or what? Whatever. I didn't have time for this. I was already late. I arrived at a gallery and saw that he was already here looking at a painting. Hey, sorry for being late. He turned around with a smile. Well, you're worth the wait, you know. Okay, please let me explain. So, yep, that's Cameron, but it's not what you think. I met him the other month as he was helping out at an event for new students. He didn't care that I wore thrift store clothes and that my sneakers weren't cool. Instead, he saw past these things and started talking to me first. So, Jack was there too, which is why he sorta recognized me. I've been texting Cameron loads, and I must confess, I think I do have feelings for him. But don't get me wrong, I didn't know Lara was his ex until I saw the photo of them. Oh boy, that sure shocked me to the core. I didn't want to tell her and not only break her heart all over again, but also destroy our friendship. That's also why I didn't care to answer Cameron's call in front of Lara when we were at the bar. And I was super lucky that Jack didn't recognize me that night, or it would have been a total disaster. I know I needed to tell Lara the truth, but first she just needs a little more time to get over Cameron. Ugh. I went home from the date with a big smile on my face, but what I saw made it instantly fade. My entire makeup collection was smashed up. What? Who would do something so mean? It took me ages to save up to buy all that. As I checked to see if any of it was salvageable, I saw a long blue hair nestled amongst the carnage. Furious, I was about to go confront her, but Kayla and Lara had already appeared in my doorway. Why did they look so angry? How could you befriend me like that when all along you were seeing my ex? So your you don't need a man speech was all just one big lie so you could take my guy, huh? <clears throat> and do you really think Cameron would like a girl like you? You can't even afford a decent handbag. Right. Let me tell you this. You will never be like one of us. And you'll never be good enough for Cameron. How could Laura think of me like that? I truly wanted to help her. Like she'd helped me. I totally only have good intentions, Laura. I had no idea he was your ex when we first met. The only reason I didn't tell you sooner was because I knew you needed more time to heal. And I didn't want to hurt you because... I adore you and value our friendship. Do you remember fifth grade? I was being teased by these kids and you were the only one who stood up for me. I just wanted to return the favor and help you too. But hearing you say that stuff makes me so sad. After that, I shooed them out of my room and locked the door. I refused to go to lectures and ignored all Cameron's calls and messages. Maybe Lara and Kayla were right. Cameron and I weren't meant to be. We were from two different worlds. Eventually, a few days later, I had to go outside. Well, because I ran out of food. When I passed by a coffee shop, I saw them. Cameron and Laura sitting together. <sighs> so Kayla was right. A rich guy like Cameron would never like an ordinary girl like me. I couldn't live in the same dorm as Laura anymore. So I was packing my stuff to move out of there. Suddenly, I heard Laura's voice. Are you running away from your problems like I did? I ignored her and continued packing. You know, I met Cameron, and we had a long talk. He finally told me why he broke up with me. It was because I was too dependent on him, and I couldn't do anything on my own. But you, you helped me stand on my own feet. And for that, I can never thank you enough. Laura, I honestly always wanted to tell you the truth. I know, but it doesn't matter anymore. You know, the important thing now is to enjoy my independent single life, right? Oh, I got you these. Kayla was way out of line destroying your things. Also, I think there's someone who wants to see you. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. I opened it and, oh my god. Standing there with a huge bouquet of flowers was Cameron. So it looks like I can continue getting to know Cameron now. And I don't have to move out anymore. But do you know what the best part of all is? I have my friend back. It was a normal, boring day in the grocery store. I was stacking milk in the fridge when Camilla, my co-worker, came and said, 
Layla, you have to help me. I have this date tomorrow night, but I'm busy. Could you please go instead? Wait, what? I don't even know your date. Besides, I have a boyfriend. Lincoln, remember? Then she began explaining to me about this dating service, and she assured me it was 100% legit. It was mainly lonely men who just wanted some company. All I had to do was talk to them, and of course, there was a strict no-hugging or kissing policy. At the end of the date, they'd pay me. No thanks. No way I was gonna do that. After my shift, I went home to see my landlady lingering in my doorway. She started yelling at me that I still owed her five months' worth of rent, and if I didn't pay it by the end of the week, she'd kick me out. I begged her to give me more time, but it was pointless. My god, what to do? Where could I get that much money on such short notice? Oh, wait a minute. What about Camilla's dating service? It looks like I was out of choices, so I called her and agreed to go on the date. So here I am, on my weird date night. I put the most basic dress I could find on. Oh boy, I sure felt nervous. I have no idea what to say and how to act. Oh, that must be him. My god, Camilla. How could she forget to mention that the guy was in his 50s? People would think he's my sugar daddy. Ugh. Keep it together, Layla. I couldn't back out now, as my home depended on it. So, I slowly approached the man... At first, he looked surprised. That figures. I mean, he was expecting Camilla. I explained the situation to him, and he wasn't mad or anything. He just smiled at me, and we started chatting. He's called Mr. Hall. He lost his wife two years ago, and ever since then, he's been feeling lonely and needed someone to talk to. So that's why he started using this service. Hmm. He was actually pretty easy to talk to, so the night quickly went by without any problem. After the date, he handed me an envelope and told me how grateful he was to me for listening to his burdens. I was itching to go home and open the envelope, but then he started going on about his heartbroken son. Suddenly, he was asking me if I'd talk to him. Obviously, I refused, as this was a one-time thing to help out Camilla. Besides, I have a boyfriend. Speaking of which, he'll be so furious if he ever finds out about this. The next day, I paid the landlady two months' rent and assured her I'd have the rest with her soon. But to my shock, she just scowled at me and forced me to pay all at once. Well, guess where I am now? In a cafe, waiting for Mr. Hall and his son. Ugh. Oh, there he is. And that must be his son. Jeez, could he look any more annoyed? Hi, I'm Layla. Nice to meet you. Save it. I'm only here because he forced me to. So just let's get it over with. Layla. Thank you for coming. This is my son, Leon. Please don't mind his attitude. Then Mr. Hall left us alone. Man, Leon was hard work. Any questions I asked him, he just shrugged or snorted. Then, when he finally spoke, he sarcastically said, So, Layla, I hope the money's worth it. What? How rude! Then he continued, You must be desperate. Don't you feel ashamed of yourself? Ah, oh, he was the rudest person I'd ever met. But, yes, I was desperately in need of money. So I took a deep breath and started telling him about myself. When time ran out, I said goodbye to him and left. What an unpleasant experience, but at least that was the end of it, right? Wrong. As Mr. Hall asked me to meet him several more times. Who was I to argue? I mean, I needed the money. But Leon was getting on my nerves. As... All he did was slouch in his seat, slurp his drink, and say nothing. So, it was down to me to do all of the talking. I began telling him all sorts of things. About my past, my family, and friends, and even about my future plans. And Leon just sat there listening to everything, supposedly. Luckily, it finally ended, and Mr. Hall paid me so I never had to meet Leon again. Because the last few weeks had been taken up with dating Mr. Hall and his son, I hadn't seen much of Lincoln. So, at the weekend, I invited him over to mine and cooked for him. We were sitting on the couch, hugging while watching a movie, when Lincoln said, in a serious tone, Layla, we need to talk. But then suddenly my phone rang. It was Mr. Hall. I quickly rushed to the balcony to pick up. He wanted me to be Leon's plus one at his eldest son's wedding, and he was willing to pay double? Ugh, that sounded awful, but 
Besides rent, I also had to pay for college fees and food, and my measly income from the grocery store didn't come close to covering it at all, so I reluctantly agreed. When I returned inside, I asked Lincoln what he wanted to tell me. He hesitantly said that he had to go on a business trip for two weeks. Well, maybe it was for the best so I could go with Leon without worrying about my boyfriend. Ugh, I felt so guilty. I swear this would be the last time I was going to do this. Leon arrived to pick me up, and as soon as he saw my dress, he insisted I couldn't wear such an ugly thing. Ugh, he was so rude. I told him I had nothing else suitable, so he drove me to a dress boutique, then told the staff to bring the most beautiful dress in store to try on. Oh my, it was stunning. I was overwhelmed when I saw myself in the mirror. Well, I definitely looked amazing in it, and Leon must be thinking that too, because he couldn't take my eyes off me. Ugh, it's such a shame, I can't afford it. But then before I could stop him, he went ahead and paid for it. Ugh, oh, how frustrating! I was sitting in the church, waiting for the wedding to start, while Leon flirted with some girls. Thank God Lincoln wasn't like that jerk. Then everyone went to their seats and the wedding began. The groom walked to the altar in this luxury-fitted suit. Man, it must be so nice to be rich. But isn't that... Is that... Lincoln? My Lincoln? Our eyes met, and he looked as shocked as I did. But instead of running to me and explaining everything, he just ignored me and continued with the wedding. I had to watch them saying their vows, exchanging rings, and kissing. I thought I was going to faint any minute now. Then at the wedding reception, Leon dragged me over to Lincoln and introduced me as his girlfriend. Awkward overload. And soon, some pretty girl distracted Leon again, so he chased after her. Then Lincoln immediately pulled me over to the stairwell. Why are you here with my brother? Were you cheating on me this whole time? Seriously? What about you? I'm not the one who just got married. Let me explain. It's not what it looks like. Right at that moment, Leon appeared and asked why we were here talking. I muttered out some story about trying to find the bathroom. Then I told Leon I had a headache and asked him to take me home. This was so confusing. How could my perfect boyfriend now be married to someone else? He kept on texting me saying he wanted to meet up and talk. I guess I needed to at least hear him out. The next day I met him at the museum, where we had our first date. So, his wife, Sandra, is a daughter of an affluential businessman who owns one of the biggest corporations in town. Lincoln's family company is in big debt, so his dad forced him to marry Sandra in order to save the company. Believe me when I say I don't have any feelings for Sandra. It's just business. I only love you. Please don't leave me. I promise as soon as the company is back on track, I'll file for divorce. Yeah, I know you probably think I'm crazy, but I still love him too. Besides, if the marriage is only temporary so he can save this family business, then that's understandable, right? He kissed me goodbye and left. But after that, Lincoln changed. Every time I texted and called him, he told me he was busy and would call me back. But he never did. I guess married life was preoccupying him. As if this wasn't frustrating enough, I had to put up with Leon. He kept on appearing at my place and bothering me. One time he showed up drunk, complaining about his ex-girlfriend, who'd just married someone else. Yeah, obviously it's far from worse than my current boyfriend just getting married. I tried to kick him out, but he'd already fallen asleep on my couch. The next morning I went to the kitchen to see Leon holding a picture of me and Lincoln and asking why we were on it. So I just shrugged and explained that we were a couple. Leon started laughing and calling me a fool. We argued back and forth, and in the end, I made him leave. I don't care what everyone thinks. I believe Lincoln. Then a few days later, I was walking out of college when I saw Mr. Hall waiting for me. He gave a slight sigh, then said, I will make this short. Stay away from Lincoln. He's married now. Layla, I'm fond of you, but if you try messing with Lincoln's marriage, I won't hesitate in making things complicated for you. Oh my god, I can't believe Leon snitched on me. Ugh, what a giant baby. In anger, I took out my phone and gave him a piece of my mind. Oh my god, I can't believe you told your dad about me and Lincoln. You're such a jerk. Just leave us alone and mind your own business. If you trust Lincoln, then that's on you. But he's not as innocent as he makes out. He and dad would do everything for the company. What did that mean? I hung up without letting him say another word. This jerk didn't even try to cover up his action. <sighs> I couldn't just let them do this. I needed to fight for us. So the next day, I walked straight into Mr. Hall's office, even though his secretary tried to stop me. 
I told him right to his face that I would never give up on Lincoln despite his threats. And you know what? Forcing your son to get married just to save the company makes you a coward. Mr. Hall burst out laughing. Well, what came next was far from funny. Turns out it was Lincoln's idea to marry Sandra. Leon was right. Both of them would do everything for the company. Another thing Leon didn't tell Mr. Hall about Lincoln and me. He saw us talking at the wedding. So we hired someone to investigate us. I was totally wrong about Leon. Right at that moment, Lincoln walked in and stopped dead on seeing me. Layla, what are you doing here? You liar. I can't believe I trusted you. Please hear me out. I took the iced coffee from Mr. Hall's desk and splashed it in Lincoln's lying face. We're done. Overcome with emotions and feeling like a massive fool, I rushed to the nearest bar to drown my sorrows. I was about to down my fourth shop when a hand stopped me. (sighs) Can Lincoln just leave me alone? But when I looked up, it was Leon. Why are you so good to me? I mean, I blamed you for telling your dad. You should hate me. Because I like you. I felt like the room was spinning upon hearing his words. Then everything slowly came to light. Leon was devastated when his girlfriend broke up with him. But then he found out she did it to be with his brother. Yes, you heard me right. His ex was none other than Sandra. At first, Mr. Hall forced Leon to marry Sandra for the sake of the company. Even though Leon was crazy about her, he didn't want to marry her under those stipulations. Lincoln overheard their conversation, so to gain his father's trust, he charmed Sandra away from Leon. Oh my god, this family was crazy. I didn't want anything to do with any of them ever again. So I just rejected Leon's feelings, ran straight out of the bar, and cut off totally with all of them. So what now? Well, I graduated last month. So after that, I decided I needed a fresh start in a shiny new city. So far, so good. I have a new job, which I adore. And it's so good knowing I'm not going to run into that jerk Lincoln or his dad. Hmm. I know what you're wondering. What about Leon? Well, one day, I was walking out of my apartment when I saw a familiar face. Yes, it was him. Turns out when Leon heard that I was moving to another city, he moved too. I thought it was sweet that he was willing to leave his family, friends, and job behind just to be with me. Maybe it's time to gradually open up to him, don't you think? Well, time will tell. Too bad my story has to end here. (laughs) This just in. Due to the new wave of COVID-19, the authorities are imposing a nationwide lockdown which is expected to last two weeks. The lockdown will begin at midnight. Oh no, I have to get back to my dorm. We shouldn't waste any more time talking about this jerk anyway. I grabbed my stuff in a rush. Then suddenly, the doorbell rang. I'll be back in one second. Stephen went to answer the door, while I had no choice but to wait for him. Gosh, this whole pandemic situation was so worrying and I was already not in the mood for any more bad news. From the living room, I could hear the voice of whoever was standing outside the door. Hey, any chance I can crash here for a bit? Sure, but just get your life together soon, will you? Gabe? Gabe turned to look at me. His eyes widened when he realized who I was, and he awkwardly looked away from me. Um, so you two know each other? Stephen looked at us, confused. There was an awkward silence between us three before he continued. So, Janet, this is Gabe. He's my friend from the college hockey team. Gabe, this is Janet, my good friend from high school. Jeez, this had reached new levels of uncomfortable. Gabe cleared his throat. Ahem, so where do I sleep, Stevie? Then he headed straight to the bedroom that Stephen pointed to while yawning, saying he's going to sleep first. Stephen laughed and turned to me, saying, He's always like that. We were quite close back in college. He comes and sleeps over sometimes. I stuttered out, Stephen, that's the guy I was just telling you about. The one that ghosted me. Stephen gave me this astonished look, but he didn't say anything. Ugh! I so wasn't in the mood for this. I think it's best if I go. And right when I thought it couldn't get any worse, a phone call came. Upon seeing me pretty much freaking out as I took the call, Stephen must have sensed something was wrong. 
He asked me as soon as I was off the phone. Is everything okay? It's my roomie. <sighs> she just told me there's been a positive case in our dorm. I can't go back until quarantine is over. Oh no, what am I supposed to do? All my stuff is in my dorm room, and I can't drive all the way back to my hometown. It's like forever, and it's late already. I wouldn't make it anywhere before the lockdown, and staying in some hotels for two weeks was surely not a smart choice. Janet, you can stay here. Stephen gently smiled at me. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. I can prepare the couch for you, so you don't have to go sleep in my bedroom. Aww, he remembers I have slight claustrophobia and feel uncomfortable in small rooms. I was about to reply, but he stopped me then immediately walked over to the couch and started rearranging it. This was cute, and I did feel touched. Guess I'm staying here for quarantine. I mean, this would be fine, but Gabe was here too. What a small world, and what an awkward situation I'm in. But what choice do I have? The first night, Stephen stayed in the living room with me, and we talked a lot. Do you ever wish we were still back in high school? Things seemed simpler then, didn't they? Sometimes. It helped that back then I had the sweetest boyfriend. Do you remember when you got the cheerleading team to perform a special routine for my birthday? That's the cutest thing anyone's ever done for me. Steven grinned. Well, I tried. We were so happy back then. Then college got in the way. Hey, it's not all bad. We're still great friends. Steven smiled back gently. Very true. It felt good taking a trip down memory lane with Stephen. He used to be a sweet and caring boyfriend, and he still was such a guy. No matter what, being around him made me feel safe. We continued talking until dawn, then fell asleep. Much later in the morning, I woke up to the sounds of the fridge door slamming. Through blurred eyes, I made out that it was Gabe. He glared over at me before he stormed off back to his room. Ugh! Why did he hate me so much? Then I saw that he'd left pancakes on the table. Oh, these must be for Stephen. So I took them over to him. He was eating them as Gabe reappeared. Hey Gabe, thanks for the pancakes. Gabe grunted out a, yeah, then gave me a dirty look before he walked off again. I tried my best to avoid Gabe, but this wasn't easy when I was stuck in a small apartment with him. I spent most of my time reading a book or listening to music. Yeah, we had history, which I just finished telling Stephen the moment before Gabe rang the doorbell. We dated for a month. Everything was cool and I started to like him a lot. And whoosh, he disappeared. Janet ghosted. I was still very sad and didn't want to deal with any of this yet. Did the universe set up this surreal quarantine situation so I could get over this being ghosted thing? Then after that, when Stephen was in the shower, Gabe walked over to me and passed me a candy bar. I put my book down and took it from him, but only because I didn't want to be rude. Then he awkwardly perched on the edge of the couch and said, Um, what's the deal with you and Stephen? This annoyed me, so I blurted out, It's none of your business! Oh, please, I could already tell there's something going on the moment I walked in! Then, before I could reply, he continued, Fine by me. Makes sense for a girl like you would fall for a playboy. Steven is a good guy. He let you stay here, didn't he? So maybe you should think twice before you badmouth him in the future. Gabe grabbed the candy bar off me, then stood up. His cheeks were puffed out with anger, and he looked like he was going to explode. That's when Steven appeared and tried to defuse the situation. He led Gabe out of the room, but after that, I was too mad to read, so I sat there overthinking things and feeling even more annoyed than ever. Dinner was awkward. We all sat around the table in deadly silence, and Gabe and I avoided making eye contact. I felt bad that Stephen was stuck in the middle of this situation. He didn't deserve this. As I was washing up, I overheard Gabe say to Stephen, Can you give us some space? I need to talk to Janet in private. Stephen went off to his bedroom. Then Gabe waited till I'd finished, then asked me to go out to the balcony with him. Look, Janet, you're smart, beautiful, and very independent. 
I fell for you right on the first date. Ugh, right. Good luck fooling me one more time. I'm so over it. Seeing that I wasn't taking him seriously, Gabe continued. I really mean it. That's why you're totally out of my league. I was too cowardly to tell you this, so I decided it'd be best to just disappear and let you forget about me. What? Was he being real? I had no idea he thought that way. He apologized for what he did, and I told him I forgave him. Okay, so maybe Gabe wasn't so bad after all. He's just really insecure. <sighs> this sucks, as we got on so well. After our conversation, I felt less awkward around Gabe. He started doing cute things for me, such as leaving snacks with a little sticky note that had some cute doodles on it on my pillow, bringing me juices, and showing me funny memes on his phone. I mean, this didn't make up for what he did, but we were confined in a small space together, so politeness doesn't hurt, right? But then Stephen started being weird. Whenever Gabe did anything nice, Stephen would tut, snort, and on a few occasions, mutter out some rude comments such as, From ghosting to stalker. Nice. Hmm, why was he being like this? Hey, don't tell me that he's jealous of Gabe. Great. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. <sighs> then, one lunchtime, Gabe made us French onion soup. As he passed it to me, Stephen shook his head and laughing said, That stinks. This is a poor attempt to impress Janet. FYI, she hates onions. What do you mean? I'm not trying to impress anyone. Oh, please. I know you still have feelings for Janet, but you're no match for her. I watched them with a poker face, since I couldn't process what was going on. Then Stephen turned to me, boldly said, Janet, so many things have happened and changed, but one thing is still solid. That's my feelings for you. Don't waste your time with this kid. Wow, I sat there perplexed. What was that? And wasn't Stephen a little too mean there? This was a side of him I hadn't seen before, and I didn't like it. Stevie, what is this? I thought we were bros. Yeah, relax, we are. Look, we both like Janet, so she just needs to decide who she wants. So, who's it gonna be? O-M-G. This is just like that Twyla Sega situation. I have to choose between two totally different guys. Ugh, I hate it. Both this situation and that series. And honestly, I don't like the immature way they're acting now. How dare you two create this whole dilemma by yourself and put me in the middle of it? I choose neither of you, okay? You both had a chance with me and you both let me go. I want to stay friends, but... That's it. I stormed off, thinking this would be the end of it. Oh, how wrong I was. One time, I was watching a movie alone and got up to go to the bathroom. When I came back, they were both sitting on the couch, arguing with each other about who should stay and sit with me and who should go. Fed up, I shouted, Will you both quit it already? You left me for college, and you for your own insecurities. And neither of you is acting like a grown man. I want a boyfriend who I can rely on, and that's definitely neither of you. As far as I'm concerned, any romantic feelings I had toward you both are well and truly in the past. They both gave me stunned looks, and more awkward silence prevailed. Hmm. Was it a bit harsh on them? Even so, they still needed to know my feelings so they'd stop their own illusions and stop fighting in vain. Luckily, quarantine was almost over so at least I'll be out of this smothering apartment in two days. Oh boy, that was the longest two days ever. No one spoke to each other, and the atmosphere was awful. When it finally ended, I muttered out a quick thank you and hurried to the door. Janet, we are still friends, right? Yeah, you're still my friend too, yeah? Stephen and Gabe impatiently longed for my reply but I just smiled at them both and left. The truth is, I'm not sure I want to be friends with either of them anymore. The last two weeks were so weird and messed up that I can't think of anything further. So, for now, 
I'm just going to enjoy the relief of getting out of that bizarre being stuck with two exes scenario first, right? I entered the apartment to see four sets of eyes gawping at me. Hang on, I know Ned and Philip from my math class, and the girl currently giving me a snooty look while twirling her hair around her finger was Jessica. Well, I didn't actually know her, but her wealthy and snobbish reputation preceded her. Then lastly was that emo kid. What was his name again? Deciding to break the uncomfortable silence, I said, Oh, hey, so guess you guys are also in detention? No one replied, though they surely heard me. Whoa, okay. This atmosphere was tense, and I thought I'd always been the awkward one. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm being made to do this weird detention. All I did was accidentally and poorly throw the dodgeball in the gym teacher's face. Then, when I was about to apologize, my tongue slipped. But, but, aren't you supposed to be the toughest since you're the gym teacher? I mumbled. Naturally, she was livid. So I ended up in the principal's office, and he handed me a piece of paper with an apartment address on it and said, Go here for your detention. You'll stay here until you've learned your lesson. Huh? What type of unspecific instructions were those? Before I could ask him any more, he shooed me out of his office. Now, here I am in this random apartment with these untalkative kids. As I looked at them, I couldn't help but wonder what they'd done to end up here, especially when Ned was an excellent student. Did he make the wrong move in the chess club or something? <laughs> we continued the whole staring at each other in silence routine. But then the door burst open and stormed in Gwen. Our school's resident carefree tomboy, she sneered out. Good evening, babies. Great. Now I was stuck sharing a living space with a girl renowned for playing pranks such as toilet papering the principal's car and filling the biology lab with live frogs. But seriously, how were we at her truancy level? Let's see who we have here. Gwen rubbed her hands as she walked around and stared at us. Princess Jessica? Oof, how come? She raised an eyebrow and grinned sarcastically. Just sit down and shut up. Gwen gave him a dirty look. This isn't basketball. You're not the captain here, jock. Then she squared up to him. Ned turned pale. Jessica rolled her eyes, and the emo boy, well, he was busy sketching something and clearly chose to ignore our existence. We'd only been here for less than an hour, and the last thing we needed was a fist fight, so I stepped in between them. Pulling a wry face, Gwen said, What's this? Little Miss Friendly? Look, we're all stuck here and we don't know for how long, so let's at least try to be civil. Let's try talking it out. So, I'm Ashley, and I'm here because of a misunderstanding with a gym teacher and a dodgeball. Jeez, nobody cares! I can't believe I have to be here with these people. Jessica stood up and left. Pfft, I'm with Miss Popular on this one. Ned sneered before he also left. And the emo boy too. Then Gwen rasped and disappeared. There was only Philip and me left in the room. Hmm, he was meant to be handsome and stuff. But looking at him now, I didn't think so. Ugh. This awkward silence was insufferable. This was just like that movie, The Breakfast Club, but much worse, and in much longer time. <sighs> Who on earth had to pack clothes for detention? I had no idea how long I had to stay here for. So I decided to go to bed. I walked into the girls' room to see that both of the beds next to the window were already occupied. Bummer, they'd taken the best spots. I reluctantly got into the only bed left and hoped that tomorrow wouldn't suck as much as today had. The next morning, I woke up to yelling. Huh? I rubbed my eyes and yawned. It was still far too early. I went out into the corridor to see what was going on and saw Jessica and Ned arguing over the apartment's only bathroom. 
Jessica wanted to apply her makeup while Ned really needed to go. Then Philip watched on and butted in on occasion to say something dumb. Why don't you use some of your nerdy mathematics to solve your problem? The only reason you need to spend so long applying makeup is because you're ugly. Ooh, burn! Philip laughed. Suddenly, the bathroom door slammed shut. They rushed over to it and tried opening it to no avail. Ten minutes later, the emo kid stepped out. Jessica screamed at him. How dare you! My personal stuff is still in there! I watched on, wide-eyed. OMG! These people were ridiculous! How was I meant to live with them? In the end, we eventually came to an agreement about the bathroom's rule. It was first come, first serve, but each of us could only have the throne for a max 15 minutes. Being in such a small space with people I barely knew was always going to be problematic, but not having our phones as a distraction made it so much harder. We had one TV, but there's only one lousy channel on it. No one cleaned up. No one seemed to get along. Ugh, seriously? When will this end? All of the constant dirt and arguing was driving me nuts. But then the final straw was this one time when I was washing my face, the cleansing foam accidentally got into my eyes to wipe it out. But to my horror, when I opened my eyes, so I quickly reached for a towel, I saw myself holding someone's sock instead. Yuck! After that, I gathered everyone and threw the sock onto the floor and said, We need to sort out order, as I can't live like this anymore. It's gross. Jessica snorted. Who are you to boss around? No one cares what you think. Before I even had a chance to say anything back, Ned piped in that Jessica was just a dumb rich girl who never lifted a finger. Then Gwen jumped up to her feet and started shouting for no reason. Philip gave me this smirky know-it-all look that made me want to scream. Then he actually lobbed a basketball at me, which almost took my head off. Then, ignoring the others, I started shouting at him. The only one who stayed quiet was the emo boy. You aren't even that pretty. In fact, I've seen more attractive slugs. I heard Ned say to Jessica, Hmm, that was a bit much, wasn't it? I mean, it was obvious Ned only teases Jessica because he has a huge crush on her. Jessica huffed as she tossed her hair behind her back, then stormed off to her room. Man, this place sucks. At least lunchtime had arrived. So I made myself a delicious-looking burger, then quickly went to the bathroom. When I returned, I couldn't believe it. Philip was taking a bite out of my burger! I screamed at him, but then he shrugged, then said he'd make me a new one. And like a decade later, my replacement lunch finally arrived, and Philip was smiling at me strangely and watched on as I bit into it. Ew! I lifted up the top of the bun to see a raw piece of beetroot. Ugh. I was so fed up with everyone that I went to bed super early that night. Only when I woke up the next day... Both Jessica and Gwen burst out laughing at me. I hurried to the bathroom and checked out my face. Oh no. Turns out someone had drawn on my pillow, and now I had ink all over my face. I had to scrub my face for ages to get it off. Then Philip wouldn't quit laughing at me. I knew he was responsible. Ugh! Such a jerk! And on the other hand... We also had the emo kid that I was seriously getting sick of. He never said or did anything. Instead, he just sat there, usually wearing his stompy boots and looking all moody. I mean, why wear those sweaty-looking boots when he's stuck inside? It was about time he spoke up, so I came up with a prank to get him talking. When the emo kid was in the shower, Ned and I filled his beloved boots with mayo. A little later, I heard some loud thump. Then the emo kid did a weird walk across the room with his foot covered in mayo while clutching one of his boots. Have you lost your mind? He shouted. And not gonna lie, I was intimidated by this other side of him. Then out of nowhere, Jessica appeared. She turned to me and shoved my shoulder. That was too much, don't you think? Oh no, you didn't. I wasn't gonna let someone like her speak to me like that and get away with it. 
so I struck a defensive pose and glared at her. We ended up in a stare-off when suddenly I felt arms pulling me back. It was Philip. I tried flailing free of his grip, which caused him to lose his balance, and he accidentally elbowed Gwen. Oh, you're done, Jock! Soon, Jessica and I were pulling each other's hair, and Gwen and Philip were shoving each other. It was mayhem! Stop! All of you! It was the emo kid. He glared at us with rage. You're acting like immature brats! Well, that was unexpected. But I guess it worked. As a few seconds later, we started cleaning up the mess we'd made. We knew something needed to change, so at dinner, we all sat around the table and tried to sort things out. The others were all staring down at their food and not talking, so I decided to go first. So, I'm here because I don't always react well to certain situations. I don't know, I guess I find it hard to make friends. I trailed off. Then Ned spoke up. The only word my mom seems to know nowadays is study, study, study. I feel like all I am to her is a grade. So when I got a B in English Lit, I ripped it up in front of the teacher. That's the story. Jessica flicked back her hair then said, Try having all the money you could ever want, but the most neglectful parents ever. I bet they still haven't noticed that I've been stuck here with you losers for days now, just because I told some girl her skirt was hideous. I was doing her a favor. Poof. Then Philip blurted out, My father wanted me to be strong and manly just like him. I don't want to be like him, but I'm worried I will be, and that I won't be able to do anything about it. So I skipped basketball practice, got into an argument with the coach and my dad, and now I'm in the weirdest detention ever. Gwen sneered. At least your dad's around. Mine does month-long disappearing acts. And my mom's dead. Oh, and I'm here because I put paint in some clown's locker. Serves them right for badmouthing me. Her words were followed by an intense silence. Awkward. But I felt like I understood everyone a little better now. Oh, but hang on. The emo kid hadn't said anything. Hey, you. I looked at him. So, what's your story? He shrugged, and I didn't think he was going to talk. But then in a quiet voice, he said, I'm Stan. I never knew my dad. My mom isn't around, so I live with my grandparents. I'm here because I ignored the principal, but only because I had earphones in. Oh, I muttered out. Look, I'm sorry about your boots. I'll help you clean them if you like. Stan nodded. Jessica was right. I had been a bit harsh on him. Then Ned gave this awkward smile and said, Um, Jessica, I know I've been a jerk to you, but it's only because I, um, I like you. Jessica didn't do so much as flinch. She still kept studying her nails. Probably because having boys smitten over her was already a part of her daily routine. Well, I might like someone too. Phil stretched his arms behind his chair. I guess I like winding her up. He looked directly at me. I felt myself blushing, and I had this weird fluttering feeling in my stomach. But why? My heart started racing. Now what was I meant to do? It's me again, Ashley. And yep, you guessed it. I was still stuck in this apartment with these annoying kids. That was definitely the weirdest detention ever. None of us had any idea how long we'd be stuck here. Oh well, at least we weren't starving, as every three days a giant bag full of groceries would appear inside the doorway, since we couldn't get out of there. Things had become a little less awkward since the day we'd sat down and opened up to each other. Although, Ned had switched from being a jerk towards Jessica to following her around the place like a lovesick puppy. Take this morning, for instance... He held a slice of toast out to her, which he'd cut into the shape of a heart. She rolled her eyes as she pushed the plate away. Poof! Get real, nerd! I don't like you! He took a bite of the toast, then in between chewing said, You'll soon change your mind. I'm sin 2x and you're cos 2x, so together, we're one! I had to admit, watching Ned try and fail to win Jessica's heart was amusing. 
But unfortunately, I had my own guy-shaped issue to deal with. Philip. He wasn't winding me up anymore. Instead, he was being nice to me. He even lent me his hoodie after I spilled jam on mine. Um, this nice version of him would take some getting used to. <sighs> now we just needed Gwen and Stan to become a couple, and things would be even more interesting. <laughs> but they barely look at each other. Lucky them, as Philip was really starting to bug me. Can you believe that he actually sprayed my favorite t-shirt with his aftershave? It stank and made me sneeze. Achoo! So I stormed into the living room where he was telling some lame joke to Ned, chucked my t-shirt at him, then yelled, Stop being weird! It's too much! He just gave me this soppy grin and replied, It's so I'm always on your mind. Ugh, I wasn't in the mood for this, so I returned to my room and sulked there for the rest of the day. Ugh, this apartment was too crazy! I just wanted to go home! My stomach started to rumble, so I reluctantly left the room to grab a snack. What? Jessica was spoon-feeding Philip cereal! Ned was sulking in the corner of the room, and Gwen was mimicking Jessica's actions with Stan, who now had mushed up cereal all over his face. Jeez, Philip thought he was so handsome that he could get any girl he wanted. Well, he sure moved on fast. Fine, I'd show him. I squeezed in between Gwen and Stan and touched his hair. Your hair, Stan. I've never known it is so glossy. I put my hand on my chin and looked at him with adoring eyes. And in my cutest voice, I asked him, Would you like me to make you some French toast? Stan gave me this petrified look and tried squirming away from me. Then Philip and Jessica walked over, and he frowned at me. Come on, Ash. You and the emo? Really? Gwen snorted. Oh yeah, it's better than a pretty doll and a jock. Oh wait, actually, you two are perfect for each other. Stan quietly laughed to himself, then muttered out, Right, dumb people should be together. Suddenly, Jessica burst into tears. What? Why was she crying? Everyone fell silent and looked at her. Come on, Jess, he was only kidding. I awkwardly patted her back. Then she blurted out, I... I've always had a thing for Stan, okay? Huh? Well, none of us were expecting that. Poor Stan looked like he was gonna faint with shock. Jessica must have been burying these feelings deep down for so long. She was the most popular girl with a reputation to live up to, after all. Through sobs, Jessica looked at Stan and continued, I knew us being here together was my chance to see if you like me. So, I agreed to Philip's deal to see if you're jealous. Tears streamed down her face. But you just think I'm some dumb pretty doll. She mumbled out an apology to Ned for being insensitive to him, then turned to Stan, sobbed. I'm not a porcelain doll. I have feelings. And left. Oh, wow. I didn't see that coming. I guess I feel kind of bad for her, and also guilty. But hold up. Philip's deal? Oh, so he pulled that out to make me jealous too? That night, we had another meeting. Yawn. This one was as dull as it sounds. Well, until we started discussing the meaning behind this detention. Hey, since when did detentions go on for this long? It's been two weeks already. Ned looked concerned. We all agreed. We'd learned how to live in some sort of harmony together, but still, we need to go outside. Also, my family would be worrying, right? There's two, I hope. Then the next morning, Philip was trying to de-jam the air vent in the kitchen when he waved us all over. He pointed up at something small with a tiny red light on it. Ned and he took it down. It was a camera. It could be a security camera. Jessica said. My house also has a few inside, in case of intruders or something. Gwen sneered. Duh, your house is a freaking mansion. Here, there's no need for a security cam. We decided to spread out and look for more cameras. In total, we found five, 
all hidden around the place, including in a plant pot and fixed to a picture frame. It was freaky to think there could be more scattered around the place. Ooh. We gathered in the living room to discuss what to do about this, when suddenly the front door opened and in walked the principal and some other man I'd never seen before. Huh? Who is he? Did this mean we could finally go home? The other man started talking. Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin, and you are the participants in my exciting reality show. Your principal here put you all forward for this, as I wanted kids with six varying personalities. Gwen stood up and shouted, What? Is this for real? I added, There's no way my parents would have agreed to this. They did, the principal grinned. They signed the documents. They all think you are at training camp. Kevin added, Keep up the good work, guys. The viewers are loving all this drama and attitude. Jessica screamed out, You can't do this! It isn't right! We'll keep you here for some more time, to see how this project goes. Don't worry, you'll all get scholarships after this. That is, as long as you cooperate. We watched as they took away the cameras we'd found. And, yep, you guessed it, they locked the door behind them. Then we gathered in the spot in the kitchen, which didn't have any cameras in it, and whispered about what we should do next. Ned suggested, I've done my calculations, and if we join all our clothes together, we can climb down from the window. We were about four floors up, so guess this was possible. Under Ned's instruction, we all wet our clothes, before we joined them, as apparently this would make them less likely to tear. I'll go, Philip added. I mean, I'm way stronger than the rest of you, and I'm the fastest, so I'll reach the cop station in record time, report those jerks, then send help. So the plan was set, and we all clung onto the end of the clothes rope as Phil climbed down it. It was kind of impressive watching him abseil down the building, and he was like a real-life Spider-Man. When he reached the bottom, we hid the clothes rope in the wardrobe and slid a piece of paper under the apartment door so Philip could find our room again. Now it was a waiting game. We all tried to carry on as normal, as we were aware of the hidden cameras. Suddenly, the door barged open, and in walked the principal, Kevin, and four massive dudes. Oh no! Jessica frightenedly whispered. Those men instantly started collecting our stuff. When one of them picked up Gwen's hat, she charged at him. Get off of my stuff, creep! The man grabbed her around the waist with one arm and pulled her across the room. She thrashed, kicked, and screamed. She might have been big, but she's still a teenage girl, so she was no match for him. Jessica, Ned, and I all clustered together, not knowing what to do. Only Stan seemed to keep his quiet and calm. With a grin on his face, Kevin shouted, well, that wasn't very clever now, was it? So we're moving you somewhere new before you're discovered. Right at that moment, Philip ran into her room, followed by some cops. There they are! It's them! They locked us up in here! The principal straightened his tie, then in a polite tone said, Oh, please, this is a misunderstanding. I'm the principal of Xavier Springs High School. And these are the particularly delinquent students who are all in detention. We're administering a special education program for them. And here's their teacher. He pointed over to Kevin. Liar! I shouted. They just made up excuses to punish us and trap us in here. There's hidden cameras and we're on some reality TV show. Ignore her. She has, um, mental issues. She'll do anything to get out of detention. Then he pointed at Gwen. Look, officer, how could we not have special treatment for an aggressive girl like that? Don't you think? We all shouted and tried to explain, but our words jumbled together. The only one who remained silent was, no surprise, Stan. The cops searched around but found nothing. They thought we were only unruly teens trying to bail on detention. They were about to leave when Stan calmly walked over to them pulled out one of the cameras we'd found the other day from his pocket and passed it to them. Then, Stan, 
still without any words, pulled out a vintage recorder, pressed the button, and we all heard the whole conversation about TV shows and the principal's threats. Whoa! Nice work, Stan! The cops instantly arrested them, and we were taken back to our families, who all sobbed with joy on our return. So, what came next? Well, my high school got a new principal, and this one hasn't given me detention. Yet. <laughs> the former principal and Kevin and his whole crew are in serious trouble with the cops. Looks like they might end up in jail. As for the six of us, well, we formed an unbreakable friendship. Philip got a sports scholarship, and I'm super proud of him. He also told his dad how he was feeling, and they sorted things out. Ned finally stood up for himself to his parents, and now they're trying to be more understanding. He also has a girlfriend and just won first prize of the state in physics. The nerd. <laughs> Jessica and Stan are an official couple, and they don't care what other people think of them. They're actually super cute together. But shush! Don't tell them I said that. Gwen decided to leave this town and go study at an all-girls boarding school. She just started dating a girl there named Claire. She sounds really happy. We're all glad to hear. So... I guess Miss Tough Cookie has a soft side after all. And me? Well, I went from a lonely and awkward girl to having five unlikely best friends and a wonderful boyfriend. Yep, I'm now with Philip. Guess being in detention wasn't so bad after all. Cheers! Ah, uh, here it is. Thank God I found it when I did. Cosmic Jess? Who's Jess? I'm Jen. You're Cosmic Jess, admin of the Secret Astrology Mailbox. Quit the act. I know it's you. I've read your notebook. Your astrological analyses are incredible. You sure did your homework on the boys I told you I want to conquer. You're my idol. Huh? Oh, turns out our hot girl Kira here, she's the weird girl who asked me, or should I say, my alias Cosmic Jess, to help her flirt with guys. Ugh, but out of all people, why does it have to be her who found out about my identity? She knew too much. Let's be friends, okay? I'll keep your secret. I swear. Okay, but no one can ever know about this. Secret friendship. I get it. Was it a friend request or a contract? I shouldn't be friends with the resident hot girl, but it seems like I didn't have much choice. If anyone finds out that I'm Cosmic Jess, then I'll be kicked out of the astrology admin group. Hey, are you blind or something? Can't you see the road? I picked up my books in silence. It's best if I don't get involved with this attention seeker. I was about to leave when... Rebecca grabbed my hand. You can't just leave. You broke my new iPhone screen. So I want to know what you're going to do about it. Is your head just for decoration or what? As you're acting like a brainless brat. What are you looking at? Don't you know who I am? And why are you rolling your eyes? Kira didn't stop there. By the time she'd finished taunting Rebecca, she caused her to run off crying. Then Kira winked at me and walked off. Hmm. A famous cute Leo wants to be my friend. I guess that's not a bad thing, right? Beneath her competitive and brash exterior, Kira is actually a warm and optimistic girl. No surprise, though, as Leos are extremely dedicated and sincere. She even gave me this beautiful white dress, just because she said it'd compliment my skin tone. Oh no! Now I've ruined it! Stupid ketchup bottle! I rushed to the bathroom to try and fix it. Jasmine, give me the soap bar! SOS! Here! Oh my god, what? Through the curtains, I saw the silhouette of a tall boy showering. You should stop breaking into the bathroom like that. We have a new tenant, he... Wait! Can I please finish up here before we have formal introductions? Jasmine apologized to him, then dragged me out of there. Turns out that's Mark, 
my older brother David's classmate, and he would be staying with us while he completed his internship. Mark walked out of the shower not long after that, and oh my god, he was gorgeous. Look at that sun-kissed skin, lean muscles and bright smile. Mmm, thank you, universe. He introduced himself, but my ears were ringing, and I couldn't hear a thing. Cupid had hit me. He even helped me clean up the ketchup all over the kitchen carpet and floor. What a nice guy. Then when the coast was clear, I snuck into David's room and rummaged around, trying to find some more info about this hot friend of his. There it was. Mark was born on May 22nd. So he's a Gemini. A perfect gift for an Aquarius girl. I went to school with a spring in my step. Oh, what a glorious day! I hurriedly lined up as I heard the coach's whistle. News on the grapevine was that we had a very handsome new basketball coach. Oh, come on. How could a coach be handsome? But... <gasps> oh my gosh. That's unbelievable. Mark, the dreamy Gemini guy from my house, was also my new coach. What more proof did I need that this was destiny? <sighs> After school, I was about to tell Kira about my destiny when she gave me info about her new target, a Taurus boy. This was the second time in a month. I was about to lecture her, but then she bribed me with the new Jan Spiller book. So, I took a look at their birth charts. Hmm, interesting. After so many mismatched attempts, Kira may have found her perfect match. But after a week of trying to impress this guy, Kira failed miserably. This Taurus guy doesn't like my enthusiasm. I just don't get it. I've shown him how kind I am by helping people out, and I even changed my style for him. I actually tried on this vintage knee-length dress that smelt like mothballs, and he didn't glance at me once. Let me check. I just don't understand how it can be wrong. Okay, let me go get some snacks. I recalculated and redrew the chart, but still couldn't figure it out. Maybe he already had a girlfriend? Or perhaps he wasn't into girls? <sighs> In this case, I couldn't help at all. Just had to close this Leo Taurus case and open up the Aquarius Gemini love story. I flipped through my chart and Mark's. We matched perfectly. And I just drew hearts around the picture of him glued on it. Ah! I have shocking news, Jen! Kira's piercing scream startled me. Why the hell is the gym teacher downstairs in your house talking to Jasmine? Oh, he's staying in David's room for a while. What? Why didn't you tell me that hot news? Wait, what's in your notebook? Don't tell me it's Mark, okay? I quickly turned around to get the notebook, but Kira was faster. So, you also like Mark. That's why you gave me the advice to be an idiot in front of him, right? Huh? Your Taurus guy is Mark? Of course, I didn't know that. I mean, he's not even a Taurus. Yes, he is. But you knew this. Now you're trying to trick me with your false info so you can find out more about him. If you want, I'll leave him to you. I'm not that needy. Not like you. Unbelievable! Do you really think you would have been able to pick those ex-boyfriends of yours up without my advice? Duh! I'm a beauty queen! You're just helping me speed things up! Beautiful, but boring. The personality that won over all those guys was built by me. That's not who you are. Boring? How dare you! I'll show you just how far from boring I am! Kira then left. Okay, fine. She's living in La La Land about herself. Talk about delusional. Poof, I don't need such an unreasonable friend. At the same time, I received a ton of notifications from the secret mailbox. Oh no, my pictures and info were leaked all over the forum. I quickly logged into the administrator account. Ugh, anonymity was the number one rule of the group. So now they'd kicked me out. My favorite job, my fans. Kira, 
this was too much. Fine. You want to play dirty? I'll show you dirty. It's time Kira's long list of boyfriends went public on the school forum. Kira the Omnivore was the new nickname that students gave her. Oh well, it was her fault for flirting with 11, no, 12 guys in just half a year. Was she trying to find a boyfriend from each of the 12 zodiac signs or something? Let's end this stuff. It's because of Mark, right? He'll never have him. He's mine. Fine. If you can win his heart in a month, then I'll apologize for lying about your boyfriend collection. If not, you have to write a post claiming that I'm not Jess. Okay. Mark your own words. Kira is a competitive girl. But in this fight, I would definitely win. I mean, come on. She couldn't even get Mark's star sign right. Even though she's a terrible cook, Kira still tried to send some disgusting cakes that she made to my house for him. But of course, Mark threw them in the trash after the first bite. She also feigned feeling faint and fell into his arms in every basketball lesson. Huh. Mark looked so uncomfortable. Not surprising, really seeing as he's 100% Gemini, not Taurus, so her fragile girl act wouldn't work on him. As for my relationship with him, well, that was coming along nicely. And thanks to our assigned star signs, all I had to do was just be myself. For instance, the other night, when I just happened to mention there was a shooting star, he enthusiastically made me and Jasmine go along and watch it. Then last weekend, he invited me and her to a friend's farm which was so much fun. I saw the cute looks he was giving me. So if Jazz hadn't been there, he definitely would have confessed his love to me. And it was true that I didn't have to wait long, as that night, I suddenly heard a knock on my door. How sweet! He'd left a movie ticket for me. Ha! Huh. Take that, Kira! I knew I'd won this one. I'm so gonna take a picture of us holding hands in the cinema and send it to Kira. The night after, I didn't see Mark at home, so I guess he wanted me to meet him at the movies? Ugh, this was so romantic. Hmm. I was in the right seat, but he wasn't here yet. My heart was beating so fast that I thought it would explode. As the movie started, the lights went out. And that's when someone was approaching my row of seats. I nervously pretended to be staring at the screen when he came to sit next to me. Why are you here? Huh? More like, what are you doing here? The two of us watched the whole film together in anger and impatience. Who on earth arranged all of this? We huffed our way out of the cinema, then spotted Mark. Only, he was holding hands with a girl. Jasmine? We chased after them, but Jasmine just shrugged and smiled. So, all this time, he'd been trying to win Jasmine's heart, not mine. Then he walked over to us and handed me his card. Go get yourself some ice cream. Pizza. Anything. Have fun. I'll be back with Jasmine later. What was that about? I looked at the credit card and gasped when I saw Timon's signature in the corner. How could I forget Geminis have multiple personalities? Timon was the founder of the astrological mailbox. Who would have thought that the leader of this group would be a teacher? Someone I lived with. My sister's boyfriend. My crush. And even my bestie's crush. Kira gave me a comforting look. Now we were both lovelorn, but in true Leo style, Kira had already lined up her next prey. Don't be sad. It's just another test. What zodiac sign do you think that guy is? He's pretty good looking, so he must be a Libra, right? I chuckled, then leaned my head on her shoulder. Mark, or should I say Timon, made me realize that before I can hope to find my dream match, I need to make some mistakes first. I may not have found love, but I did have my friend back. So that counted for something, right? <sighs> At least the test of friendship worked.